Just like that, yeah. yeah. <coughs> no Vaseline. Why you gotta go? That's Why you insane, go? fam. What is it? Why you go with that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> don't, don't mind this guy, man. What's going on? How's it going? Well, guys, how's it going? Bro. <laughs> He's reminding me to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Deji was late today. Yeah, what's going I'm not going to lie to you, yeah. I fell asleep. I don't know what's been going on, man. I'm just tired. tired. Fine, I fell asleep, yeah. And I wake up, my phone is dead. I'm just mad confused. I'm it's looking one around. One of them, yeah, the phone Bro, died. Bro, phone dead. You know when you have like... J- bro, phone dead. I woke up confused. I was like, "The fuck's happening?" I was like, "Oh, what time is it?" Them I look. I look at the time. Yeah, we're supposed to be here for half seven. I look at the time. It's twenty five past seven. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I, like, I, I, feel, I, I feel like I have somewhere to be right now. <laughs> Fortune was um, also late as well, so he was kind of shout out me. Dublin bus and um, yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to hear what Naomi, the messages Naomi Jeremiah asked me to send. Okay. Because I told her I was doing this. Okay. Yeah, what, look. <laughs> what a way to start the fun. Let's yeah. go, go on, speak on uh, this. The first one she said was, we see the clicks and we're saying fuck you to them. I'm still waiting for the... Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> we see the clicks and we're saying fuck you to them. We see the clicks and we're saying fuck you to them. When hmm or hmm come to place events in the industry, they go find a black rep to invite people and the black rep invites his slash her friends, even the person that has. Who's this person that has one? Wait, what's called? For, for you do, for, for, do me a favor. What's called? Talking talk to, to this yeah. part. Yeah. Talking to this part. Up, to oh, turn it up that way. Yeah, 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 yeah perfect. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. My apologies. That was one. Okay. And then the other one. <laughs> Let's get w- straight into this. Into it, yeah. <laughs> she said, when fortune blows, don't hop on his dick. Word to everyone in Dublin. That is all her. Not come me. on, Naomi. Yeah. Now that's my girl, for real, for real. Po- podcast, <laughs> come on, talk to us. But yeah, just context on that. <clears throat> Recently, there was a... Burner Boy listening party, yeah. where a lot of the people from the creative scene were there, and people were mingling, networking, and you saw from Victor Alfred to Soleil to Dungles, ev- like everyone. everyone, everyone within our scene was there. Obviously, DJ and I were not there. You didn't see us there. Fortune made it. We'll get into that in a second. So obviously, then that created a lot of conversation, sparked a lot of conversation about like why wasn't I there? Why is this person there? Why is I not there? Again, this happened last year as well with the Guinness with the Reg Thirty Two. Yeah, yeah. And it's called the block from party. our point of view, last year I was like, you know what? I'll put, we weren't doing enough. We were like ten episodes into our rebrand. We weren't really. We're still doing Charged and Friends, and I could be like, yeah, come. I understand. That's a what very responsible response to not being invited, fam. Yeah, no, you have to. I, I don't like playing victim. I like looking within first. Like I will get to yeah. this year first. Like so last yeah. year, but I could understand why. Last year, Dongo maybe felt away because he was like, he was hot, he had momentum. And he was like, why is this man there and I'm not there? Again, what is the standard to be there? That was so a conversation. So he felt like he had done enough to kind of put himself in the conversation with these people. Exactly, yeah. And then this is, this is it's like, bro, when and who is deciding? It's like, okay, 15 episodes, nah, they can come. Yeah. Go that way. Okay. Um, my, my question is, what is the basis mm. to get on to get in the door? And that's you know that, way. that I agree with that, and, and that's <coughs> I think that's why I can see Naomi's stand point of view because I watched her episode on if I speak with Dongo, go check it out, yeah, yeah, and yeah. she's like, I've probably done more than a few people in these doors, and I could look at it as Dej of like, but Dej, we've done live shows, <laughs> we've yeah. been consistent, we've gone on where's your head out, we've gone on if I speak, we've done all these episodes. What I could also think I could so I can understand what she's saying. I was like, I feel like maybe we've done enough this year to also be invited. The other side of it is, is like you have people. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, anyways. Mm-hmm. You have people that are like undeniable. You have to invite them. Victor Facts. Alfred has eight hundred k followers. Yeah. Of off his own back. back. Facts. Zeta was in Vogue. Of his own back. Yeah, yeah. Zeta is in Vogue. Travis and Ellis have the number two album in the country. They have to be there. The other side is just it's networking and being seen and who you know. How mm-hmm. did you get there, Fortune? This is my thing right now. It's like <clears throat> I I find well knew especially, and I'll break down like the scenario when I got in the room. Yeah. But my thing was just shouting everyone. Like, I can't get into the specifics as to why I was like, I have to be in there. Mm-hmm. But I met people through that day and everything was saying, okay, I have to go there. I have to find a way. So I was shouting everyone from the rappers to the people who were putting us on, giving us the guest list. And it ended up, I have to give a shout out to G Carp. <clears throat> he ended up putting me on his name for the guest list and yep. he showed me in and them things there. But fam, where I realized that there was a group of people that they want that they wanted, yeah, and were like, bring these people. I wasn't in that, yeah. Of course. As soon as I walked in the room, there was just confusions, fam. Like I saw, 
I can't even. I'm not even gonna go into names. And don't, don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't. Like people. If you want, do. But I, I advise don't thing. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's my advice. I, I don't. I'm not gonna take away from anything that the people exactly. who set up that night did yeah. because they put on a class event. Exactly. Regardless. Amanda Ade did an amazing job hosting. Nathan did an amazing job putting that on with Warner. It was fantastic. It was a real nice day to be a nigga in Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going to say it like that? That's what it is, fam. <laughs> no, it was. It, it looked like it was a real nice day to be a nigga in Dublin. And I walk in and people are looking at each other like this. And then I saw somebody. Somebody that I knew saw me turn the corner like they didn't know me straight. Ooh. Some of the people waving them. And then I don't, I don't know who. I, I, I'm guessing this was the person who was like running the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, have you got, um, are you? And I was like, oh, hi. Yeah, I'm on with this person, this person, that person. My name wouldn't even on a list or anything of the sorts. So I was really going in on just a, look, someone said I could come to. I'm here. I'm here, yeah. I brought my mandem with me. That vexed her even more. Because I was like, if I'm coming, my people are coming. Mm. Now, this is where I knew I was pushing it a little bit. And I could confidently say, because at that point, there were already so many people coming. She was, like, and in fairness, they were great. They were like, if you can wait like 15, 20 minutes, just let us get the first round of people do. Everybody can come and it'd be cool. It'd be fine. That's what I mean. Anybody, anybody could have been in that door that night. Yeah. And my thing is, it's like, this is why I respect your point of view so much in terms of like, what could I have done more to get in the door? Because all you really had to do was ask. Yeah. But, and I understand with the Naomi's and the Dongos last year coming from, in the taste of why aren't I in this room? I'm doing enough. Mm-hmm. My thing is just a case of, bro, I've stopped waiting for man to give me my roses and I just start knocking, being like, bro, will you let me in? Like, I'm doing this, this, this. Because then when people see what I'm doing, they're like, bro, why haven't we heard of you? I'm like, you tell me. Yeah. Because, it, 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 bro, it's too broad. You could look, then look at, okay, do you blame it on the people that Warner hired to reach out to the artists? Do you blame it on the artists for not reaching out themselves? Like, I don't know. It's such a, see, this is the thing. Dublin's in a very weird place at the moment, I feel. And I don't say Ireland. I say Dublin. Mm -hmm. Because people like to act like this is where the heartbeat is. It is, for sure. But Dublin's not the make or break. The Burner Boy party wasn't the make or break, fam. Like, you ran into people there, and everybody fine well knew that, like me and you said, there's a game to play. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Mm -hmm. So my thing is just, I know... If I want to play the game the way it should be done, I can't wait for people to be like, okay, now you can come one level up, two yep. level up, three level up. I just climb, bro, when I ask. And yep. I plead and I, I've, again, I fully agree. And that's <coughs> why I'm not taking it personal mm. because I know you're not visible to ev- everybody. Yeah. And in my little echo chamber, people could see me and be like, oh, I love the pod, I love charging, blah, blah, blah. But Werner, Werner might not have an idea and I don't know Nathan. I've never spoke to him. I've never seen him. I don't know him from anywhere. Yeah. So I don't look at it as like, I don't think anybody's sitting there saying like, Let's not invite. Despite what Jordan and Digi did this this year, let's not invite them. Oh, so fuck them niggas. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't look at it because I'm like, there's no reason. If we probably reached out and asked, we probably could have. And now, to be fair, I knew the event was on on a Friday. So every time there's an event on, even a wedding, like Dongo would hit me up and be like, "Are you? Especially Congolese wedding. Like, he's like, are you going to this wedding this weekend or mm. this event is on? Are you coming? Are you there? He it did hit me up, but I was kind of like, no, I didn't get an invite. But I, I didn't even mention it to Dig because I, I just forgot about it. I was like, yeah, maybe they just invite certain people yeah. to go to the event. I blame you for me not being there. It, yeah, okay. uh, fair enough, because I could have said something. If, if you had yeah, said something, you could have asked. Like, like, I just like, didn't like, say like, it. like you said, what's called sitting there waiting, you're never really going to get anything. You just yeah. got to, because if you had told me it was on, yeah. I would have probably just, yo, you going, you going, you going, can I? Yeah. And yeah. would have been there. Do you get what I'm saying? Bro, by, by halfway through the night, People were just walking in, like, mm. like the, there were so many people there. You, there was nobody there to stop. Do you have your pass? Are you invited? Who did you come with? There was nothing of the sorts, fam. And that goes to show that. And I look at this in like the, I'm looking at this in the grand scheme of like Dublin as a whole and the industry as a whole right now. People are going to put on this. You're on this level. They're on this level. They're on this level. They're on this level only for so long. Because by a specific hour of the night, everybody was on the same level. Only because they were all in the same door together. And that's why I looked around at myself to the people that were in the room with me. And I was like, these people would never give me the time of day had I not been in this room. So the fact that they're looking at me, eyeing me, shaking my hand, dapping me up. Now we are in this upper echelon mm. of Dublin. Where people are saying that this is the high life. Where you're getting those invites. Like telling people that I'm going to go listen to Burner Boy's album before it comes out. They're like, how? I'm like, bro, don't know. <laughs> but I'm here. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. And no, and you, again, so it's that's the thing. Do you think now? I don't think so. Anyway, should there be like a criteria? Like, look back to Naomi's point of view. Should it be like, okay, you've done this or you've done enough, and maybe you should be recognized? Because 
we can the person organizing this is they can't see everybody mm-hmm. and I that's why I don't even blame them. It's the mm. fact that they're even putting on I said it last year and I stand by my point. It's a net positive that these events are even happening. I've I've not been to either of them. Yeah. I've not be, I didn't go to the Guinness store last year, I didn't go to the Burner Boy this year. But it's a net positive mm-hmm. that these exa- uh, events are happening and you're putting creatives in a room with execs and you're putting people creatives in the room with other creatives that like you can go mingle and you do music and you have other musicians that maybe you probably wouldn't see other places or yeah. you probably wouldn't talk to or you could they could get lost in DMs but now you're in a room with them and they have to acknowledge you so I look at it as like yeah I could look at it from a selfish standpoint and be like ah oh, but they we've done all these things but why are we not there but I look at sometimes it's kind of step back and don't think about yourself think about it as like and I'm a fan of favoritism and nepotism. I love it. Fair when okay. LeBron is trying to yeah. get his son into the league, I'm like, get your son into the league. Because I see the white people have done nepotism and favoritism forever. And w- if I was in a situation where I know fortune and I know fortune, can, I can get fortune to meet someone and bypass certain yeah. certain rules, sure. I will do it too. So sure. I don't blame the people you that can't. do it. I don't do it at all. You don't get to pick and choose when this shit works for us and then when it doesn't, we're fuming about it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, the, only, yeah. the only people that are mad about nepotism and favoritism and all that are the people that don't benefit from it. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? And I, I, I was in that criteria of life for so, so, so long. I'm like, I've spent more time hating on Dublin than loving Dublin. Yeah. Because yeah. I've been in the industry for, like, fam, do you know what it's like to see Dear Fact TV start and then all of a sudden just stop? Mm. completely like i remember the first brother that dropped a video on that page was an irish dude whose music video was shot on a train mm. now dear fuck is this huge thing fam like and you look at where everything has started and where it is in dublin now because no, we don't we only have the excuse of dublin is small so much now yeah because if it's getting to a point where Warner are pissing people off by not inviting them purely because there's just too many people to consider. Mm. Dublin's not that small anymore, do you know? I think the fact the reason why it's a problem is because Dublin is small. Okay, go on. Because like if we're if we're somewhere, right, and you don't know everybody that's in the room, you're not really vexed that you're not there. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like if you only if like let's say if it was only the oh, likes of like Victor yeah, Alfred yeah, and them yeah, and that yeah, were yeah. in the room. But if you know one regular, regular guy that's in the room, it's like I do more than him. Why is he there? Mm. <laughs> and I think that's what, you know what people the wrong and way. That, and that's what yeah. rubs people the wrong way because if they didn't see anybody that they really knew there or they didn't know of the person that is, like that, that is, do you get what I'm saying? Like, like, okay, like, yeah. let's say, because like, you could be like, I've been around Amanda. How come she didn't remember yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. bruv, does Amanda think about you on a daily basis? Yeah. <laughs> does she listen to what you do? Do you get what I'm that, saying? That's it. When Dongo told me, and I thought, I thought it was, I thought it'd be like, ah, Dongo has like a bit of clout within the, like we can say that. So he has yeah, yeah, yeah. he has the clout and the victory. That's that's what I thought it was. I was like, yeah, maybe it's the people with more clout than where I am right now. Again, I try to be very objective and very self aware. Mm-hmm. Like if I don't get an invite, I don't I don't look at it as like, oh, they don't like me. I look at it as like maybe what am I doing and maybe it's not enough and maybe what I could be doing. But then to Deji's point, then you open it, you just see everybody was there. And Bro. to your point of like, wait, I could have been there. You like, know the ones. The you know, right you know when you look and it's like, I have your number, I have your number, I have your number, I have your number. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? And then Ron is in the group just saying, Why well, your man's not here? Fuck you, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I think because everything is so close and familiar. That's why people start feeling disrespected because it's kind of like I see you everywhere and you know that I do music. You have one song. Why are you there? Yeah, you <laughs> know what I'm saying. You know that I do yeah. music, and personally, my music is better than his music. Yeah. Why the fuck am I not there? Mm. You know what I'm saying. And people start taking it personally. But if it was a room full of people that they didn't know, no one's gonna be mad. Yeah, it's really it really well, just is that simple. Do you, do you not think that we're getting not we? But when I say we, I'm talking about the collective scene, whatever we want to call it. Mm-hmm. There's like a false sense of like ego or who you are, like it's false sense of awareness because everybody. Are in within their own. I'm, I'm sure Naomi's probably not really heard of Charge It or listened to an episode of Charge It, and that's cool. And but in my circle, people tell me, "Oh, great podcast, man! Oh, great!" And even with musicians, you could have people that's probably not heard of you, but not you specifically. But you l- can operate in an echo chamber where people are like, "Oh, man, I love your stuff. I love your stuff." So you think you're bigger than you are, but you're really not. You're, you're like, in a bubble. Fam. You're in a bubble, in a bubble and that's something that's messing up people's perception <coughs> because they're starting to believe. That maybe they're it and you're not there yet at the minute, you know? I feel like. Hmm, how do you go about this properly? It's like what me and you were saying. Like, everybody knows that there's a game to play now. Yeah. And I'll even relay to what my homeboy Five said on another podcast that we shot here with the. Uh, uh, bar for bar. Yeah. Yeah. He said, you need to know your role, fam. And I look at this. Like, if it's a game, 
I'm like, oh, uh, this year especially, I've been like, I'm gonna have as much fun doing this as I can because this is how I'll, this is how I'll get in the door with these people and I'll be in these invites and I'll be in these conversations, fam. Mm. In my mind, <clears throat> in this creative scene, this industry, whatever we want to call it, yeah, we've assigned roles to people. Even the way we speak about Travis Els, when, when whenever Travis Els gliders comes up, we're gonna think number two album. Yeah. So when you think Top Boy, you're thinking them, man. Straight off dome. If not them, it's Cello. If not them, it could be Kojak. It could be whoever, do you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. And then where I see the likes of myself, the likes of Naomi Jeremiah, who have been seeing these things go on in Dublin, and you're like, I'm vexed. Why ain't I there? And people don't like that I say this, but I feel like I break it down into status quo. And whoever established this, I don't know how, I don't know who put this together, but they've decided to put the likes of them man who are chatting and them man up here, and then they put all the other artists down here. Mm-hmm. This is not a fault to Travis and Els. This is not a fault to Solo or any of them, man. This is what we are putting out into the street. So this is what Warner have to take in. Mm-hmm, Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. At the end of the day, if them man are so disconnected from the black and Irish community, who are they going to go to to learn about the black and Irish community? Us, man. Mm-hmm. So everything they hear, to an extent, comes from us. Yep. So... With this, I feel like, going back to knowing your roles, if you see that a pocket of the industry has been filled to an extent or taken, in my mind, it's the case of find a way to give yourself reason to be in there. So now I've got this Mr. Rage thing going on. Uh, Basic Back have labeled me the guy who's going to lift the veil on the Irish industry. So that's how people are that's looking true. at me now. And, it, and to be fair, that's the cl- the clip I saw. And then I was like, yo, bro, this guy looks like he has something to say and he's saying it with... On- Again... The older you get, the more you, you, you when you see authenticity, you feel like you can be like, I fuck with it straight, see it straight away. And like, I said, yeah, it's like and this guy's just being real. Know, like, I didn't charge into the game. This podcast, I've been watching it. I've been, say, been saying, if I get to do this, this is class for me. Mm, like, this was something you. I wanted to my Which is why I had no issue when you lot showed love under the basic back post. I was like, fam, whenever you guys have a free episode, please have me down. Just mm. to chat, just to be here, to yeah. say that I got to meet you guys, sit in the room in front of the lights and the camera and chat, mm-hmm. you know? And my thing is, where I feel like the status quo has set us in terms of like being bottom of the barrel, the people that have to kick the door in, scream and shout and be like, let me in. Oh, this isn't a bad place to be. Okay. It's not, it's not a bad place to be because I found that when you come in on that aggression and that energy and you're like, let me in, that's the reason why everybody's looking at each other sideways when Fortune walks into the Burner Boy event. It's <laughs> like, how did he get in here? He's yeah. like, he's tried hard enough. Mm. And then when people give you the time of day to listen to what you have to say. You're like, oh, he should come to these more. Bro, that's what I've been trying to tell you is that I should come to these more. So being down here isn't even a bad thing like that, fam. We just need to find a way, and I know it's easier said than done, but find a way to boot the door down, bro. Because if I can do it, anybody can, fam. Naomi knows that she should have been at these events rather than me. Bear man know that they should have been at these events instead of me. But all I did was just kick the door in. And Yeah, but the thing is, like, you know what it is, yeah? <coughs> Some people are shouting about not being at the event, but they'll go to the event and they'll snap and they'll chill with their friends. Why did you need to There's be at the event? event? Why do you want to be there? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, do you want to be there for Snapchat? Snapchat. Do you want to be for there for Instagram? Or are you actually going to go there and network? Do you get what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, how you get into that room is when you go into a room or introduce yourself to everybody, yo, I'm this, I'm this, I do this. Do you get what I'm saying? And then hopefully next time it happens, so or you see them again, and then you start building that relationship. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, if you're sharp, it's like don't everybody that's there, follow them. Complaining that you're not there because you just wanted to be there kind of thing. It's like, had you got on the opportunity and you got the invite and you was in there, what are you going to make of it? I hear this, yeah, but, and again, we had this conversation every day. It's like, I said, know your why. And some people, why do I want to be there? It's just, their why might just be, I just want to have it on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. And that's okay too. That's like, you can, you can condemn them based on the standard that you the game have for well. yourself. This is you a- might have a standard that I'm going to be in that room to network. Their why to be there is like, I just want to be around these vibes. It's just as simple as that. By the way, for any of the people that are upset that they weren't there, a big part of us being there was just to say that we were there. <laughs> There's only so much that man were able to gain from it. Yeah, Because I was s- chilling outside and all the rappers were kind of having their own conversations and everybody was like, why are we here? And then every, we were like, we know why we're here. We want to chat to these people and see what they have to offer, man. Sorry, bro. Busy, man. <laughs> what? Sorry? No, busy, man. <laughs> and um. Yeah, we were like, we want to meet these people, see who are the people, who, where do we get these deals from? How do you, 
contact these men and be like, look, I'm trying to do this music thing. I've got a couple of tracks that have done decently well. I can do a couple of shows, put them on together, but your email's not on your website, so I had to meet you in person. But then when push comes to shove and you have to introduce and you say hi, people can't do it. And then when you end the night, all you have is the videos on Snapchat. On Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll only take you so far. Class that Warner reposted you. Or you're on a highlight or something, but bro... That's only gonna do so much for you. That's, know. A, that's enough for some people, though. Some people, the gratification and the validation. Again, we all do. You do music. I do pod. I talk in front of a mic for mm. an hour every week and put it out. There's a certain level of validation that I'm looking for from somewhere, course, and I know where yeah. mine comes from. I like when we put out a clip and it's getting engagement, it's getting shared, and people are fucking with it. I love that shit. But for some people, it's as easy as I'm on a highlight and people are liking this. I, again. Yeah, just some, some people just have to be like, you know what, that's not enough for that's me. Like fair, that's not enough for me. But for you, if that's going to give you your validation and you're going to feel, feel gratified that like I'm, I'm in front of the Burner Boy poster and I can share it and people will like and say, oh, you were there? It's very juicy, to used to. I just don't know why people are so bored her about like I, I don't understand why this is a conversation. I don't understand why it was a conversation last year. It's going to be a conversation when the Black and Irish thing uh, nominations come out. It's going to be a conversation. Like, it's like, that. bro, like you know what it is, yeah? I feel like just for me, because I'm someone that expects nothing from everybody, yeah, that, like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. like, me complaining doesn't do anything. It, it hurts me more than anything. Mm. Anytime some we don't get invited somewhere or something doesn't happen or we feel like, to be honest, we rarely feel like we should have been somewhere. Mm. Like, if we're not there, we're probably not there for a reason. Do you we, get what I'm saying? Or, like, yeah. we just, we always look at ourselves like, oh, yo, have we done enough? Like, transparency, me and Jordan have the conversation of, like, yo, you know, like, the podcast is cool, but you got to be out there, like, on the ground, chatting to people, being outside, being being that yeah, person. Yeah, do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, chatting to new people, introducing yourself to people that you don't know, oh. looking like a beg. Oh. Like, it's all of those things put together. And this is the thing, bro. The people that are starting to act like they're too good for this is the influencers. <laughs> bro. The attitude of these man at that event, fam. <laughs> I texted Pearman to get here. You got the invite. Couple of videos with the ring light and you're chilling. Yeah, I digress. But I'm chanting them outside. I'm like, bro, how you feeling about being a... Everybody's looking at me like this. Looking out the room with them. Two free drink tokens in his hand. Mind you, I ain't even got a mind yet. <laughs> He's like, bro, I don't know. Like, this thing's starting to get along. I'm like, how so? He's like, because you see the same shit. The influencers act like they're homies. Mm. Post the picture together. Everybody helps each other. Get the right angles for the photos. Get their reel together. And then that's it. We just fuck off. And when we walk by each other the next day, we don't know each other. You know what it is, yeah? <laughs> Fam, people have been talking smoky about the scene for so long. I love I don't know. this when we say the scene. Because about it's, you know it's, 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 because it's it's labels. I don't know what to label. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's icky. That's what it is. Yeah. Now, nah, but like, you know what it is, yeah? I just don't... Like, maybe I've been lucky. Everybody that I've fucked with fucks with me. Everyone that I've, I've never really experienced that. Everyone that I've chatted to in this thing has been calm. Mm. I can ask questions. That you doesn't come, bro. <laughs> What's called? I can. <laughs> What's called? But like, I could, I can ask questions. I could, like, I could chat to people on a level. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know what it is, as well as that. Maybe it's because I've known of some of these people for a long time, or I've been around some of these people for a long time. That it's kind of like I've always known of you. You've always known of me, kind of situation. And the people that I have just met have just always been cool. So sometimes when people are going on rants on Twitter, like these man, these I'm just like, who are you man talking about? Because Everyone I meet is cool. <laughs> Do not have shame, fam. I don't know. Me personally, and this is not to anybody specific, but I am too prideful to go and complain that white people do not invite me somewhere. Yes. I'm too prideful. Now, mind you, I need these people's help. <laughs> I'm probably shooting myself in the foot. But, bro, I have to be real. Like, especially the criteria. Towards the end of the night, when I saw that people could just walk in, you have no reason to feel offended if you were not invited, fam. There's mm -hmm. no, there, there, there's nothing. It's like you said, when we have to do this, when we talk, speak about a scene, and when we have to put ourselves, we have to try to take ourselves out of the realm we're in and put ourselves in a sense where we're trying to make the creative scene realistic in our minds, but it's so hard to do that. It's like, mm. bro, you're not missing out on much. We're still very much at the start. Do you know? I remember, bro, I'm only just turned 20. Fair enough. I have enough parties to go to. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, plus so I can't even like. I go when it's just like, why? Do, why are you bothered? Do you but, know what I mean? No, but like, again, I see formal. the thing is, I do formal. understand everything. I do understand it's like, why are you bothered? Why are you taking this personal? But I also understand. So people again, the part of it is you're looking for that. Like I've put work into this. I've worked on this album for a year. I've worked on this song for three months, and I'm not being acknowledged as a human being who does something creative. And your your ultimate payoff comes from people. Yeah. So not not to get not to get that from people. I understand why you're bothered. But this is the thing. Just because you worked hard 
it doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. what's called? We have sat here, well, what's it, this, episode 79? Yeah. We've had heard and done 79 episodes, paid money to be here, do all of this kind of shit. You can work as hard as you want. You could have put all, you could have put 10 years of your life into this album. It doesn't mean that I have to recognize it. You get what I'm saying? So then let me ask you this, because I love the way you're saying this. And I, I feel like I can ask you this question and the answer I'll get will come with ex- expertise in this. How do you go from doing those 79 episodes, being in the game for about 10 years, and just being like, bro, I could bust my ass for another 10 years mm. and nobody's going to care. How do you find yourself getting over that hurdle of like, I could do all of this and nobody could see it? Um, you, you refocus at different points. Okay. Like what's called, we were 10, 15 episodes in, this was this was before charge it like because we, we were three at the back at first 10 15 episodes in at first we didn't have consistency we stopped for ages we used to do one a month then we came back then we did like a couple episodes we missed two three weeks we come back again so we're like 10 10 episodes deep at this point we 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 started to put in some hard work and then something happened black and irish of uh, what's called black and irish awards the first one no nomination no nothing no head nod, no nothing we said calm you See, know that's that's the thing but that's the thing. That was still a, val- a point of validation from an, another source that you said you used that as motivation. Yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna do. Yeah, but like we just didn't voice the frustration on Twitter, but which is what people are doing. The, the, but the thing is, even if we had voiced our frustration, yeah. our frustration wasn't with anybody else but us. Because my bro- my brother then comes up, he's like, "Yo, you guys are good, but I just never see you anywhere." We said, "Hmm, all right, cool." We pivoted. We started getting. We started. You know what? Sometimes people don't fuck with you unless somebody that they fuck with sits, sits stands beside you. So you know, we just started going on guest run. We just started getting all the guests, everybody that's in the scene, everybody that's doing anything, people that we just want to talk to. And you know what? Yo, I saw you were with. I saw you were with. I saw you were with. Now we're getting certain conversations. We're in certain things. Then next year rolls around. All right, cool. Yeah, charge right there. All right, cool. Now we didn't win it. Okay, refocus. How do how do we win it? We need to get our clips better. We need to do this. We need to do this. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, if yeah, you're sure. constantly s- checking, yo, what am I doing wrong? Like even recently, we're like, you know what? You know what we're doing? The podcast isn't enough. Podcast discoverability isn't good enough. You know what you need to do? You need to go outside and meet people. Do you get what I'm saying? So at every point, you got to refocus and so okay, what am I not doing? And if you keep doing what you need to do, and you keep refocusing and you keep trying, you keep asking, you keep putting yourself out there, making yourself feel uncomfortable. I don't think there's a way you don't, especially yeah. in a place like Ireland where anybody's phone number is what? Two messages away? Yeah. yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't, yeah. you can't. For me, it's just remembering why <coughs> I do this and not to lose focus on the why. Because I said I, this to yeah, somebody just recently. If I yeah. lose focus, I'm like, I'm not getting nominated. Mm-hmm. I'm not getting, I'm not being invited. That's not why I did this. That's not why I did it till today. I, I, I do this. I, I watch, I always say this. I watch Brilliant Idiots. And I was like, this would be so fun to meet up with people and just talk and have fun and have fun. And again, it got to a point I've said to Deja, I'm like, it's getting a bit too expensive for it to be a hobby now. So there has to be another pivot where we have to start to you have to start monetize. Yeah, yeah, you have to yeah, start monetizing fam. it too also. But I know why I do this and I don't do it as like, I've never did it to be like, I've never talked to the mic and say maybe one day Warner will invite me to an event. That wasn't why I did this. I did this over Zoom. I did this over an app with Joe. I did this. I, my first in-person episodes was in Charlie's because I just wanted to pod. And as long as I keep focus on that and I was like, yeah, why do I do this? Oh yeah, I enjoy talking to cool people, yeah. opinionated people. The minute I saw your clip, I hit you up. I'm like, I would love to talk appreciate to them. It, and that's that. why yeah. that's why I do this. So I, d- yeah. I can do this for another... Fr- the only reason I'd stop doing this is like, if it stops being fun or if it just stops making financial sense. If I put so much money into it and I'm like, we just lose the money at this. It's irresponsible. Yeah. Like, if it becomes sure. irresponsible mm-hmm. to do it, I'll be like, yeah, it doesn't you know, make sense. You can't pay a mortgage as well. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah but we no got sense. studio time, though. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they just, they just obviously is like refocus on the goal and a new goal each time. That's his why. Yeah. And my why is like, why did I do this? It's just fucking fun to talk shit on the mic yeah. for an hour. Yeah. That's how it's easy but, as it is. But that's, but that's, that's, just, that's just the thing that, w- that always just makes me laugh. Like, because it's just like people think just because you put hard work means you have to get something back. And mm. it's just not always like that. Do you get what I'm saying? Myself, yeah, do you get what I'm saying? Because like, yeah, granted, I understand that you woke up at 5 a.m. every day. I understand you work seven days a week to or afford that studio time. But it doesn't mean shit at yeah, the end of the day. Nothing is guaranteed. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, right, what these businesses care about is, yo, what are your impressions like? Do you have the following? How can we use you? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, I feel like, like also, because we're in such a small, such we're in some, such a small place as well, I feel like people get overly gassed about yeah. things that aren't, gas worthy yet it's such a scary thing to get trapped in because i remember i was at a shoot for um we were doing promo for jaffa's breaking bread 
and I was talking to the videographer on the day. Like his thing was, he was like, more time in this era of musicians, I'm giving niggas like two years being in the hot seat. And I'm like, go on. He's like, you can only keep that sustained for so long. <clears throat> and I ask you how you go about doing something for so long because when you have that realization that this shit doesn't matter, that's when you start to see the weak perish mm. instantaneously. The people who were doing it to say that they do it, opt out. Yeah. So like, I don't need to do this, bro. I'm doing this just to say that I do it, fam. I'm mm -hmm. not in as deep as you now. Mm -hmm. But I find, even especially as a musician, I don't know, I can't speak about it from a podcast perspective, but I found myself in a bracket where I was like, okay, it's about who you know. It's about who's on my tracks, the streams that I pull in, and how I network myself around the country. So I'm reaching out to the people where it'd be class to have them on my song. <clears throat> then I understand, oh, okay, these men see a tier list as well. Mm -hmm. Because these men will respect to a specific point based on my accolades. Like, the roses I got after my Button Factory event were insane, all because one girl threw panties at me, fam. <laughs> That's all it's it is. Validation. That's when, yeah. that's when, yeah. that's, that's how we do it. <laughs> that's when, that's when I started seeing rappers I didn't know knew I existed reposting my thing, commenting on my thing. Started seeing rappers that I used to reach out to from way back when. You will see me in 2018, 19 in their DMs begging for a track. Never heard from them. And then when this comes out, it's like, fam, and that's okay. And I feel like one thing, and I correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm reading into your character just off like the couple of minutes we've spoken so if I'm talking shit stop me straight away mm. but I feel like with you you've understood that there's a part of your emotions that needs to be taken away mm. in this industry like you can't take everything so personally yeah, yeah, yeah you're you gonna know? get yeah. nowhere yeah. and once especially after that Unify came around and I did that show at the button there were I remember I was like there was a, an era of my life where I would have been so upset that these men are gassing me now but I'm like, look, I know that these men need to gas me. So the fact that they're gassing me alone, that's one thing checked off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If Dublin is so small, it's going to come around to you. Yeah. It's not going anywhere, do you mm -hmm. know? Warner, Ireland, or whatever the case may be, or whoever's attention you want, they're not going to flip overnight and be like, yeah, we've done all we need to do. We're done. We're packing up and leaving. They, they're established in different countries for a reason. We have those types of establishments that are worldwide set up in Ireland because they know that there's a living, breathing community of musicians here now. And it's just, in my mind, the way I see it is if you keep on going, you'll get there, you know? Yeah, and, that, and that's really what it is. Like, just like every, like, remember, what's called Taser, Taser Black from Three Shots, Three Shots Tequila was on a podcast and he was mm -hmm. like, don't hit me up to be on your, on your podcast and you're three episodes in. Yeah. You might not be here at episode 10. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of like when you were in those people's DMs in 20, 2018, bro, 2019. This is the thing. They had no, bro. Even I, if somebody hit me up with what I was on, I'd be like, bro, I can't. Yeah, do you I get what I'm saying? I like, bro. you have to go gather the accomplishments and like you have to go do certain things <laughs> for people to start looking at you and respecting you. Do you get what I'm saying? Like for us, after who's the main character, that's when a couple of people were like, oh shit, yeah, you guys are good, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? And then yeah. that's when we start getting a few... Some people might comment here. Some people might. I'm like, oh, okay. M remember, we were literally like, <laughs> oh, we laugh at certain shit. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, if you sit here taking everything personally and everything means that to you and everything means that to you, you just might not. Ha you just might not have the stomach for this shit. I'll be real. When you lot mentioned the Black and Irish Awards, yeah, fam. Now, now, when I saw everybody at that, I was fuming. My manager at the time. We'll circle bit. back on the manager conversation, but go on. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was, um, I remember I was looking at all the people that were there. My manager at the time was there, but I weren't there. Mm. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, black and Irish. I'm seeing hella white people there. I know niggas that, um, what does, okay, Cause you might not holding your hands in your face like I say. I'm just laughing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure. <laughs> you know, I didn't expect you to go. I was expecting you to talk about the awards not being nominated. You yeah. said I saw white people. <laughs> um, but it's not even, and I, and I don't want to make it a thing. I don't. I do not want to make it a thing about this color person, that color yeah. person. But if your thing is black and Irish, look at what fucking word is coming first, fam. Prioritize the niggas. There's a no, reason why. Yeah, there's a cool. reason why there's a reason why Black and Irish was created and started mm -hmm. was to give ourselves a community where it's like okay in a world where we need 
grants for something or a world where we need people to take us seriously and I don't have the emails and the contacts to reach those people, they can help me if it's worth their time. Mm -hmm. and my thing is, bro, I not even on a myself thing, but the people that I was seeing who had felt like they were disincluded from that, it was heartbreaking because they're like, I'm putting so much into this and I want to be a part of this, mm -hmm. but it's a case of fam. They just keep on closing the door on us. And now it's a case of like, I'm like, okay, what is the criteria for these people to be in the room and these people not to be in the room? Because I was fuming that I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I was livid. And my thing was, oh, if I'm not invited to the awards this year, I'm pulling up with the Henny Ball and the Black Tims like Kanye did the uh, music video awards ceremony type thing. And it's like, bro, for what I even would be going there for on that night, fam, I couldn't have even told you. And mm -hmm. it's just going to keep on circling back to what we're saying, fam. I wouldn't have admitted it last year or the year before or wherever it was. But if you, had you asked me, why do you want to go? I don't know. Just I, I feel like I should be there. Do you know what I'm saying? I'd be mm -hmm. like, I just feel like I should have been there. But now looking back, I know I know I shouldn't have. Yeah, but that's like that's that's the thing that's funny for me, right? Like, because we live in Ireland here, use the fact that it is small to your advantage. Yeah. Because like I said, everybody's number is two phone is two messages away. Like if you needed if you need if you needed to get my number, you need to get Jordan's number. You could hit Ron, Ron would have given it to you. Yeah. You like any but like we're so close in prox proximity that once again, like I said, just because you just because you work hard, it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed that something is that you're gonna get something out of it. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So it's just one of them situations where because it's so small, use that to your advantage. Everybody is you're able to find everybody. If you feel like, all right, cool, I need to know such and such. This person from their Instagram, they go to such and such events, they go to such and such events. All right, cool, you know what? Maybe I should start going to such and such events. And when I see them, I'm gonna introduce myself. Yo, this is why I do, this is why I do, blah, 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 blah. And then you become more familiar. And then also when you start becoming more familiar, yo, you good, you blah blah blah, you blah. Do you get what I'm saying? And that's just, that's just how easy it is. It, you know, imagine if we're in a, in a scene or in an industry where it's so big that you don't know who's giving out who or who's doing what. You don't even have the benefit of being like, I can go meet that person. So do you understand why I look at people sideways when they have a hard time in Dublin so they move to London? Yeah, what's called? You're going to be you're going to be a little fish in a massive in pond. A massive pond, fam. And the niggas are telling me, "Oh, bro, I'm just gonna go America. I can't lie." I'm like, "Why? What are you gonna do out there?" That you, do you get what I'm saying? Here? So if saying? if you couldn't work your way into the room where you can get the person's phone number here, how are you gonna go work your way into the room way. for a faceless, nameless person that you don't know and you don't know anybody that knows? Do you get what I'm saying? So it's kind of like if you can't even get yourself in that room here, Burner wasn't even here, so it's not like there was security or anything. Yeah. You can't get yourself <laughs> in that room, but you, you want to go to London. Could have walked in. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I like, London, like, like proper exclusive. I know exactly where that event is. I could type that venue in and drive there tonight. There when somebody told minutes. me where it was, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? I could be there. I could be there within 40 minutes. If you can't get into that room, but you want to go to London and you want to get into one, of the, you want to get into like um, Kiss or one of these mad mad yes. places? Move, yeah. move, man. Come on. Close. Like yeah, you're yeah. not ready to put in the, the little work. Like, cause and the thing is, Dublin. like, for us to become in, like, now we're in this scene or whatever. For us to become in this scene, you know, what we did, we just recorded more and we just chatted to people that we already knew. <laughs> honestly, the barrier of entry right now is like very low. Let's, let's just, yeah. just like, honestly, we just we booked the studio, recorded, just kept recording, and I was like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. the po we, now musicians are like, we're releasing an EP. Let's do a uh, media, uh, media run on your podcast. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, and RG is like, oh yeah, you guys are part of the scene. I was like, yeah, I guess. Like we, are. we, we always look at ourselves like. We didn't do anything. People, yeah, people I, think I, we I have clout. About this because you man are sly like household household name now. Uh, See, we don't feel like that. <laughs> I get it, I, and I get this, but <laughs> like, even I remember when Jordan hit me up for this. Yeah, like I said, I've been trying to talk to you, man. So I sent it into the group chat. I'm like, yeah, the charges to the game podcast is locked. <laughs> don't, they were don't like, do that. Don't do that, <laughs> no, 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 no. Gas me, gas me, yeah, gas me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me give these niggas their roses. Pop them. I hear it. I look, at, I look at the laughs that you man be having, <clears throat> and this is the thing. There are so many podcasts, and for real, take me in for two minutes because I want to yeah. be serious with you, man, because there are so many podcasts here where you can see replications mm. of replications of replications, but you, man, are taking an energy that I have in my friend space with me yeah. and my mandem, that my mandem have in their separate friend spaces. Like, you are creating an energy in here where even if I'm watching, I feel like I'm sitting with my boys and chatting. Mm. And the fact that I can do that and it's black and Irish people that are doing that, bro, please give yourself your roses because now 
you man are a living, breathing part of the community. The scene, whether it's this big, whether it's this yeah, small, yeah. you man are a part of this. Nah, Thanks, sh- 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 thank you, bro. Sh- thank you. It's, and sometimes it's like <coughs> comparison to TV. Again, I did the whole when I was looking at. I did after Naomi said there. Uh, it's like well, how many songs did release? I was looking at it back. I was like, yeah, what did we do? What was the criteria? Again, the criteria was you can walk in. But <laughs> in the moment, I was kind of like, what are the other podcasters doing that we're not doing? And you do start comparing, comparing. And there's obviously there's, there's standouts. There was your head out, don't you guess get just they stand up to do the great thing but then you're like we just do as much as everybody but why are we not gonna ask that thing like yeah maybe the numbers aren't there you start ma- making excuses and caveats for yourself just to maybe have perspective of like maybe that's why i'm not there what do i focus on maybe get the numbers up and i will also be in those doors but i want to plug in an intro quick before you say what you want to say yeah. we haven't plugged an intro yet anyways anyways we are here we are charged bang, bang. we are the podcast with the highest level of analysis the culture needs i'm uncle jay but you man's call me jordan and i'm here with you know she girls for voice big dig nigga with the mightest touch i know my voice is insane <laughs> oh my god yeah, that's me yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who we got here today oh bro uh, I go by the name of Fortune Igabor and Mr. Red, whatever these men are saying on the streets right now. I'm just outside, bro. I'm <laughs> coming from work. I still have my badge on. Guys, I'm just here to chat. I can't lie. Has anyone ever told you that you look like Omar from The Wire? That's it. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I also Cause it's funny because I've been watching The Wire recently and I'm like, yeah. that nigga look like Omar. I'm trying to get into this. this. Is that any good? It actually is. Because I, ne- I like, you know what it is, yeah? I don't know if it's really? my selection. You looked mad like him, bro. Really? Mad like him. Fair. Digi, in the edit, put it beside his face. Put <laughs> 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 you know? I, I usually do a quiz. It's a short quiz. Okay, yeah, let's run it. Five questions. You have one lifeline. What, what's the criteria? I have music, <laughs> religion, fashion, sports, and cars. It's long if I five pick questions. music and I fuck No, 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 these are just oh, the no, questions. You have, to pick, you have to answer all five. That's what they're based on. There's one one question about music, one question about religion, one question about fashion, one question about sports, and one question about cars. Okay, let's run it. Let's run it. Okay. Reasonable Wait, what's the lifeline? One lifeline, you have to ask Ditch. Ditch doesn't know the question. I don't know these questions. Like he, so if, you, if you're stuck... So he's my lifeline, I have to ask him. Yeah. 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 But look, I think I might see the way he's scratching his head. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> look, my general knowledge is shit. I'm not even going to lie. So is mine. I don't know. You know, I don't understand how people go on like... Who wants to be a millionaire and all these shows? How do you have such vast random knowledge? And you see when they be answered, correct? Do you correct, know what I'm saying? Correct. Oh, who is like, who's this king that did this and who was his wife? I'm like, bro, why who do knows? You, why do you know that? Do you get know what I'm saying? Like, you can't even study for it. It's too broad. Yeah, it's broad. And this one, uh, last, they said I like, went on money a bit too easy, so maybe you're overcompensated. This might be a bit hard. I don't think it is, but let's see. Music question. Reasonable Doubt, American Gangster, and Kingdom Come are album by which artist? Just like. Run them back. Reasonable Doubt. American Gangster and Kingdom Come, an album by which artist? Plus, you're 20. Oh. Yeah, that was a like low blow to the dome, but I it's fair. I don't know. I know, I know. This you, one, you can, I, if you can, you can use it for this. You can use your life next, DG. Do you want to use your life? The car thing. You're, you're, you're going to kick yourself. I feel like it's on the tip of my tongue, but I feel like it's going to be. Like, if I say it, what happens then? Nothing. You just get it wrong. <laughs> nah, I don't want. I don't even want to give a wrong answer for this <laughs> life. Yeah, I'll let you run it. Yeah, it's Jay Jay Z. Jay Z. Go on. Jay Z. Yeah, no, no, no. Fair, 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 fair. I could That's way crazy. More. Oh I could my god. Way more. I could listen way more. You know, you know what's crazy? It's just like, bro, like you're really twenty. Like it's twenty. Yeah. So that's why when some reason, <laughs> but that reason why I came out ninety six. I was, I was, I was born in 03. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I don't like when niggas do that to me. No, you know, no, you, you know, you know why, you know why it's like that. Yeah, it's just because. My whole life, everybody, every time I ask someone when they're born, it's 1990. Yeah. 19, and yeah. then it's kind of like. Cool. I'm 30. Well, this, by the time this is out, this month. Yeah. And you know, you know what it is? Yeah. It's just kind of like when some people tell me what year they were born, I remember what I was doing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, I remember what I was doing. What were you, my on? In I was 10 years old. I was living in Ka- uh, Maynooth now at the time. Wow. Oh. Just going to Fort I was, class. Like, I was in. Yeah. I think I was thinking I was stealing Game Boys in primary school. <laughs> Question number two. On which day of creation did God say, let there be light? So there's only seven days. You have one out of seven chances to get it right. So, so what day? On which day of creation? It took God seven days to create earth. On which day did he say, let there be light? I don't even want you, man, to put this in the pod anymore, bro. <laughs> real. Is that a hard question? Yeah. You know, I. it's one of those ones that you feel like you know, but then you say it and then you might be wrong. But you can just. But I'm pr- I don't know what, I'll be real. If, if skipping is an option, I'll skip it. Nah, you ain't gonna skip, no, you skip this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. T- think about it. In would okay if you if you if you if you're supposed to create something from scratch, at what point do you create light? 
if you're in a dark room and you want to start creating, at what point do you say let it be light? What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you see the last <laughs> you No, know, no, don't let the mic catch. <laughs> the original question I had on which day did he create man, I didn't change that. I was like, was that day, day three? Day four. Oh, four. Day four crazy. is what he created man. The wait, 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 were you in church this week? No, I, I did a research code for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one, did you will know, but I don't know if you'll know. Ah, see, if I knew your age, I probably would have made it more appropriate. <laughs> the acronym FUBU from the clothing brand. Oh, uh, yeah, that's one. What does it stand for? That's crazy. Yes, but he wouldn't know though. That's crazy. You, <laughs> you did him dirty. I know. <laughs> if I knew, I knew I could have made this a bit more friendly. But yeah. Uh, Fubu, what's it called? Are you are you skipping? Yeah. Well, it's for us by us, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I missed that. Sorry. For, for us by us. us. Yeah. Fubu, bro. That's what that's what Biggie and them were wearing. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, like yeah, Alan, okay. you know Allen Iverson, the yeah, basketball. Yeah, 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 he he would wear that all that yeah, stuff. So yeah, yeah, okay. Larry, I think I just know it from TV shows. That's Larry, it. it's a sports question now. Larry Bird and which NBA player are credited for saving the NBA in the 80s? Michael Jordan. Ooh, close. Magic Johnson. Fair. Yeah, because what's called? Jordan was more in the 90s. 90s, 90s. Yeah, yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Renault is originated in which country? Renault, the car brand. Which country? Fucking Germany, I don't know. Uh, France. France. Yeah. Yeah. You would have done well in this quiz, but see, because yeah, yeah. you're in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> it would have suited you more. <laughs> Next time, I'll make it a bit more. You, you did it dirty. I'm not even going to no, lie. <laughs> <laughs> I read the Jay Z question. I'm like, because you said this was light, and I was like, if he doesn't, if he doesn't get this, everything else. Is nah, because you you know what it is. But okay, wait. Question, yeah. Do you go back on like music history or like like where do you get your music knowledge from? Um, it, 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 it all comes down to what I'm trying to create as a year. Mm-hmm. Like my even like if I show you. If I show you, man, my on repeat right now, there's only so many you could n- name. Like, it, 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 f- even for the EP that I'm that I've been working on this whole time, there really hasn't been a reference point. The earliest I would have went into hip hop is like watching a show called The Get Down about how hip hop started with like the break beats on the spinning ducks and them with um, this DJ, this DJ, this DJ, the one who started it all. I don't even know. Yeah, no, it's on the tip of my tongue and I'll forget it, but Grandmaster Flash, I think. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Sure, yeah. And after that, I was listening to a lot of Biggie when I was young. Mm. A lot of Biggie, like Ready to Die, Life After Death. I know those albums fairly well. But what, what age was this, that, though? Where you when I was listening to them, Biggie. I was 14. 14, so that's, you were born in 2003. That's like, what year is that? 2018. 2018. But my question is, yeah. what makes you what MP makes you go yeah. back to Biggie? What makes me go back? Yeah. At the time, um, it's a lot of um, with myself. I operate on the idea that the world is operating around me for me. So the reason I started listening to Biggie at the time, bro, it's so stupid. It's a funny story. <clears throat> when before I before I was old enough to work and have a job, I used to take a visit to Deals and Little and. I would take all the Kinder Buenos and all the wine bins and sell them at school. So that was my way of making peas. You go in, you take your shit, you go out. And I was listening to Biggie because I was like, I'm taking jellies and Kinder Buenos. He's taking drugs. I was like, either way, we're we're both making peas whatever way we can. So now, in my mind, I'm walking out into the world as if I'm Biggie Smalls in 2018. Yeah, you're the the biggest trapper in the the school. (laughs) You stand (laughs) there, you see what I'm saying? And bro... I'm such a big idea. I'm such a big advocate for romanticizing your life, playing into the idea of like, bro, your life is a movie. Treat it like such. Like God has written the script out for you and all you have to do out is go out and play the scenes out. Mm. So even when I got grabbed, I'm like, I happen to Biggie Soch, chill. If he's fine, I'll be fine. So that's why I had him on heavy repeat at the time. Because I was like, bro, if he can make it out of selling them things there, mm. bro, I'll be fine. I'll be chilling. And then his thing was, okay, I need to double down on the music. I'm like, okay, fuck all of this. Let me drop a song and see what happens if I take it seriously. That song did very well. We thank God. And then after that, it'd be like right now I'm listening to a lot of alternative rock coming from the 70s and them because I'm trying to fuse that into hip hop. So my knowledge on hip hop is very, very, very minuscule for how much I'm invested in the industry alone, fam, in terms of me being a rapper, but I listen to everything else under the sun more than ever recently. Like if, right now, if I'm not listening to my own music, I'm only listening to Utopia. Oh, nice. You yeah. Great album, yeah? Yeah, heavy. Yeah, I good. think, I'm, I, I don't, go on. Sorry, no, cause the, 
being obviously who is you, who do you think is the greatest? Like since you're like twenty now, who, who do I think is the greatest hip hop yeah artist of all time? Kanye. This this is a Kanye stand right here. Stan. Stan. Oh, Stan. Yeah. I think it's it. I, I th- I, for some reason I didn't expect you to say Kanye. I thought, I thought you'd say someone like Travis Scott. No, 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 no. And this something. is the thing. I know where Travis Scott comes from. Mm. So my thing is, and again, with Kanye West, again, this goes into my idea of like romanticizing my life and saying Kanye West is in this world purely to operate for me. Mm-hmm. In the sense where, not in a... Did that go off or it's just standby? Oh. No, keep going. I'll, I'll okay. It's not so much in a sense where um, Kanye does everything he does in the world for the sake of myself. Yeah. Do you want me to wait till that goes back on? No, keep going. Yeah, no, you can. It's, it's, um, it's more a thing of, okay, I have this to my advantage. I have his story, everything that he's had to go through. The same brother that had to kick down all the doors did it before I did to yeah. show me that we can make it this way type mm-hmm. shit, you know? So I feel like he's the greatest because... He is one of the few rappers that was told no 10 times over, 20 times over, 30 times over. Had to overcome every single boundary that a rapper could throw at himself and have thrown at him. So to overcome those boundaries, with only so much complaint, by the way. Yeah. To then reach the accolades that he's done, the numbers that he's done, the records that he's broken... After being told no 10 times over, that's instantaneously going to be the greatest person to me. Do you know, after watching that documentary, I, I understood where his delusion comes from. Absolutely. Because Bro, I could, you could yeah, see, like, obviously he's now, going to yeah. be delusional because everybody has told him, you can't, you can't, you can't. And he ends up being one of the greatest hip-hop artists of all time. So for him now to be like, I'm going to sell shoes, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And people are telling him, like, no, nah, you can't do this. Like, yeah, it's the same like, bro, feeling I've that you guys told me. Before, yeah, yeah. You know I've read saying? the script. You guys said this about you said you said this about producing. You guys said this about rapping. You said this about shoes now, easy to selling. Yeah. If I want to do some I like I, I said I always say this like dreaming comes with this, you need a bit of delusion to be like, I need to do this. So when people are telling him like, Oh, Kanye needs to stay in his lane, Kanye needs to do this, I'm like, he's heard this so many times in his life, he's just proved it wrong again and again. Yeah, so why do you not think it's at this point that you're going to tell him no and it's going to make sense to his head? He doesn't operate on that level. Yeah. So, Cash. yeah. And like, <clears throat> bro, uh, I also have to put it down to the music he's making, fam. Call, bro, yeah. breaking, breaking that lane in the 90s, early 2000s where if you're not a tough guy, yes. you're not rapping. The pink polo with the backpack. Pink polo, backpack. Teddy backpack. bear for the album. Teddy bears bears for the album. Not everybody's saying, he's the greatest fucker to do it like. Yeah. Do you know? If you're from Chicago, the, there's, there's yeah. a certain stereotype that you're supposed But yo, this kid from Chicago, educated, mom's, at, mom's an edu- uh, lecturer. How is... Wait, do you, wanna do you know where I'm from? Yeah. Do you know where I'm from? Yeah. Yeah. So like, even then, when you look at my ends, and then you look at the type, the other musicians from that town, you bring them in here. Me and them are going to dress this, dress differently, yes. sit differently, articulate ourselves differently. So I'm so thankful that I have a brother like that who can show me, bro, you don't have to be like the people you're coming from. And when know? did you get into that? When did you get into the mindset like, this is the guy I resonate with? Is it because you, we've talked about it. You're saying, I'm going to kick down, down doors. I'm going to, if you're, you're going to, you're not going to deny me. You might delay me, yeah. but you're not going to deny, deny me. me. So what, when did you get into that mindset? I was like, I'm going to do it this way. Um... Late last year, as soon as I started doing the A New Rage thing. That's the whole, that's where, it's the only reason I'm able to say that I am where I am now. Is just, I got tired of waiting. Like, the whole thing with A New Rage is to be like, bro, if you're vexed enough, do something about it. Yeah. You can complain on Twitter and be like, okay, I've got my outlet. The people know how I'm, how I'm feeling. I always say to my niggas as well, bro, I don't mind if you need to cry to man's shoulder. Mm. My thing is, what are we going to do after we after, cry? Exactly. After we cry, you that's see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to look at myself and everything. I'm like, okay. I've been looking for these man's attention and they're not giving it to me. What am I doing to get their attention? Am I going about this the right way? So I'm like, okay, let me put on my own show. I'm going to create this cult-esque type thing. I'm not really sure what to call it yet. And I'm just going to base it all off my anger towards the industry. At the time, this was a complete fuck you to Dublin. Mm. Me and my people, me and my supporters said, okay, if you man aren't going to invite me on these nights out where you're having a class time, I'm going to start putting on some of my own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't think I'd do as well as I did. Thank God I couldn't have done it without him. But you look at the kid who sits with his legs crossed from Blanche and he was told by all the rappers in Blanche, bro, your shit is ass. It's whack. You're only going to make it so far. You're only going to do so much. Why do we do that as people? Though? Why I do I, I, bro, I don't yeah. know. I don't it's know. Not I wish I knew. I wish we, we, I knew why the instant reaction is to shut someone down you know rather than be like, oh, you keep doing, bro, yeah, or just fine. correct them. Yeah. See that way. And then that delusion started to come into play because 
I had people that had made music with me, people who's still on my Spotify today, say that I'm not going to make it out of the hotel I was working at the time, mm. say that I'm not going to make it past lunch. I had my manager at the time tell me that I'm going about things the complete wrong way. Mind you, this is after selling out my debut headline. Mm. So we've already been one of the people that have sold all the tickets that there are to offer. And people are still telling me, nah, this isn't going to work. Why did you want to say fuck you to the Dublin? Because what, what got my attention, I went to watch back the whole interview, was the clip. And you were very passionate, let's say, about the fact that you people positioning themselves one way when you're actually doing the other, the other thing. Why was the point that you were like saying, fuck all this? Because my favorite, one of my favorite podcasters, comedian, whatever, is Andrew Schultz. When I started listening to him, he got to a point where he said, fuck the industry, I'm going to go where the people are. I'm going to get the people to fuck with me because... I have a direct access to the people. He got to essentially to your point you're again. Why are you people not giving me a Netflix special? Why are you not inviting me? So fuck y'all. I'm going to do it my way. I was what saying was fuck you to Dublin because I just didn't understand the game, fam. Like, I felt like it was really just a case of the authentic, the unique people who tell the truth will make it the first. Bro, completely <laughs> lost, bro. <laughs> Little did I know, fam. So my thing was like, bro, if you mind not pushing this message, why aren't you living to it? Yeah. This is what I said on Basic Back. I don't mind... If your thing is business, is money, is the insights, the views, and the rappers that are going to make you the piece back. Yeah. But when you're starting a channel, or you're starting a label, or you're starting something, whatever the case may be, and you're saying, we're doing this for the culture. We're doing this for the <laughs> youth stuff. We're doing this for the people. We're doing this for the people. We're doing this for the streets. The revolution isn't for everybody. And now all of a sudden, <laughs> it's all about the P's and the pay slips and the invoices. I'm like, fam, stick to your word. I, I said this, okay, fair, I, and I hear that point. Mm -hmm. But fair, I've said this to Yams, he was a PT here, and he says he's trying to grow his own PT brand because he likes helping people. Yeah. I'm like, that might be your attention initially. And that Initial. might be... It, it, but you might get to a stage of like, yo, again, me and DJ, I was like, it's because I need to pay bills. And I, don't and I don't mean to cut you off, but bro, it's exactly like you said. You realize... You have to cop on and be like, okay, if this is a career, we need to play the game. Yeah. And then I understood this. So my fuck you shifted a little bit. It shifted. It wasn't at Dublin as a whole because, bro, like I said, I was lost. Mm. I'm glad that I'm doing the podcasts now because I've got a proper head screwed on. Okay. Whereas way back then, it was just all fury. Yeah. I'm coming off busting my ass to fill up a room with 300 people. And my manager's like, yeah, but we're still going about this the wrong way. Another artist that he was managing at the time hadn't even reached my accolades. And I'm like, you're still telling me that I'm doing this the wrong way. Mm. So then I went back. I was like, okay, let's book Soundhouse. Let's do this again. And this time it's just going to be for us. I made sure that it was my niggas who was opening and closing the night. That it was my people hopping in between the sets. All of a sudden, stupid money coming back our way. Mm. Stupid acclaim. And now I'm crowd surfing. And it's purely because... I just stopped waiting for people to put me on. Amen. You know, you can't like, and I get so cross with myself for thinking that way in the period of time, but I understand it all comes from the passion of the game and the music industry that I'm in. But I felt like, again, we'll double down on the maturing and realizing we're adults. This is business. They're using me because I'm telling them I can make money. Mm. I'm using them because they're giving me a space to make money. And to network myself and to show people that I can perform. Yeah, no, I, I want. Do you think? Obviously, you did it. You based no, no, you did it. You said you, you did it your way, where you said fuck the industry for a minute. Let me do my own thing. Let me do my own show. Is the industry still as prevalent? Like using Andrew as an example again, he started blowing up when he said fuck the industry. He, when he released, he wanted to release his own special. He had to buy it back from the people and he says, you know what? I've spent so much money buying this back, and the people pay for this now. And I did. I paid for it because I've been fucking with him for so long. So it, it kind of shows me like how important you still see the industry is when you yourself have direct access to the people via the internet. Yeah. So now, um, and I'll ask you to, let's to just show those for so we can Screen. see it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so we can see you on it. So, thanks. I'll ask you to say that question again just so I can fully understand. No, like how, how important do you still feel like the industry is uh, today? Like, do you, because you have direct access to the people, you can <coughs> put on your own show, uh, do you still feel like, okay, someone still needs to put you on or I feel less this, so? is, this is where, this is the level, of, I feel like it depends how far you want to go. Okay. Um, it's like I could I could chill here and some way somehow I could build a career off this some way somehow like if I wanted to stay in Dublin and just be a booker and I keep on looking for artists like myself who don't have that way in and I could be the way in and I've cracked door in with the Grand Social with Soundhouse with Button Factory and I have now booking rights on all three of these places I could stop there but I'm fine mm -hmm. and now my thing is bro okay how far can we go because now my thing is and especially now that 
people are like, okay, Fortune's going to tell the truth about Dublin and he's going to lift the veil and it ties in with the Mr. Rage thing and he's coming on this Aggie thing and he's calling people out, saying nigga this and white people this on the podcast and them. I just want to see, now this is all my genuine curiosity of like, when I get in the door, what is the industry like? Mm. Because even, even, um, I even forgot I did this, but I knew there were people that wanted to be at the Burner Boy thing and I went on my private. I don't know if I was allowed to do this. I don't really care. <laughs> but I was like, if you're fuming, you're not at the Burner Boy thing, hop on my live in 30 minutes just to see that we don't need to be here for like, there's only so much we can do. And I was holding it up on the IG live and people were like, oh, this is it. I'm like, yeah, this is it. I'm like, you've seen it. Do you still want to be here after seeing it? So then now I've cracked that. I'm like, okay, what's next after that? Can I get in the room with Warners myself? Maybe, maybe not. I'll see how they treat man. Then if I can go up there, it's like, okay, people are moving to London. What's going on in London? Why are all the Irish people going out there rather than staying here? Then I'll get there by myself and realize, oh, because they did their thing in Dublin first. Yeah. Do you know? My main thing now and I hope I can stay true to this through the future. I'm going to keep on praying on the fact that that can be my main mission at hand and that can be the thing I focus on. But now that I have the means and the pull to pull these people in and to kind of have this much attention, I just want to be a living, breathing example the same way Kanye was, that you can do it. Yeah. Because I'm so, 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 so thankful for Kanye's existence, fam. And it's like we said, bro, if you're a Kanye stan, it's not just about the music. It's about yeah. the being. It's about the energy. Mm -hmm. If you're a fan of Kanye, like he said himself, you're a fan of yourself. Because mm -hmm. somebody that's a fan of Kanye and listens to those music is a fan of themselves. The type of music I make, I make songs where I want you to listen to that before you have to fight somebody. Mm -hmm. Before you have to go to a place and you're shitting bricks. Before you're nervous, fam. I'm making Rage's music. And if people are calling this a revolution, the music I'm making, I have the soundtrack in it. So where I want to see this end up is being in a light like Kanye is where people have told you no enough times and you've cracked in the door. And I just want me living and breathing on a day-to-day -day basis to be proof enough for a little kid like me in a classroom who's just writing songs to be like, yeah, bro, you can do it. Like, Because I, I and, and, and it's going to sound like the fake thing that you say to get people on your side, but fam, people do not understand what it is like when you live and breathe music, fam. Like, it's way, it's way, 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 way too dangerous, fam. Way too dangerous. People would only, people would always speak about how I have a level head about being a musician. And I speak like I have so much expertise. Yeah, fam, that's because I nearly let this shit kill myself when I was 16, like. I've already been through this stage of life where I double down on my emotions, everything I live and breathe being music. It's not worth it. It's not, it's not worth it. When, when I tell you, man, and any of the label heads, any if, if this episode reaches any of you, man, and you know you have some type of pull, please re-recognize with yourself that being a musician means you are putting in emotion, time, money, just like we all are. But when I'm banking on lyrics that are about my real life story to impress these people over there, these people over there to attract 50,000 people, when that doesn't happen, I'm like, this is my life, this is my story. If this doesn't work, I won't work. I have no business here. That was my life, fam. Fam, I'm here. Now I realize that everything after that moment is a fucking bonus round, fam. So my thing is, by all means, if I have another opportunity to step out into the world tomorrow, what can I do to make sure that even on my Instagram, somebody knows, go for the shit if you want it, fam. Go for it. Because, bro, I went from being distant, blanched, niggas are making memes about me, I'm waking up from a nap the same way you was, people are like, I hope you're okay, <laughs> sorry about the hate, I'm like, bro, I just woke up, what's going on? And now you're selling out shows, you're crowd surfing, panties is thrown, everybody's screaming your name, and now mana mana saying that you're one of the best people to do it, that you're the future, fam. Don't let these people take away your drive, fam. Don't let them do it, fam. It's yeah. just, and I, and, I, and I hate the whole motivational shit, like, bro, go for what you want to do. Like, I don't want to turn this into a motivational episode or whatever. But it's true, though. Bro, yeah. bro, it's real. It's real, fam. It, it, it really is, and it's just one of those things where, like, just because you know that you're talented or you believe in yourself, if you haven't shown us anything to make us feel the same way, why do we fo why should we focus with you? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, for you, it's like, all right, cool, you probably sat there. And you know what it is? It's always niggas that love the music that 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 are the most affected by it because they always feel like if I have good music, nobody can touch me. That's the smallest part. Yeah. <laughs> like it is fuck all, bro. It, like I know I know fine well myself. You know the months, should I say that? <laughs> I'm taking a moment to be home. I'm taking a moment to realize what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I might not. I'm definitely not the best out right now. Definitely not. Not by no means. I'll get there someday. But I was like, I don't even need to be, bro. I don't need to be. The mm. people that are on top right now, I can rap better than some of them. But just because I can rap, that doesn't mean that I should be in their position. Fucks. Understand how your industry works. Understand what you need to do. If they can do it, if I can do it, why can't you? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you now you might understand as well. You could so easily chill in a bedroom, set up five cameras between all of you man's iPhones, record off your microphones, and now you've got a podcast episode. You do 10 more of those, and people want more, and you're like, okay, yeah. season two's coming around. Are we going to go back to the bedroom, lads? Yeah. Are we going to stay on the iPhones and everything's there? You start to recognize money needs to go into this, time needs to go into this. Now look at yourself and ask yourself, do you really want to be a musician? Look at, look at all you have to do. Everything, fam. I don't know why this people. Three, four, five years, bro, and you're wrecked. You're tired. I don't know why people want to become musicians. Like I actually don't. Uh, bro, and this it's heartbreaking because even now I'm asking myself, what am I going into? Mm. Because now it's a, even a constant conversation of selling a soul. We look at America like once you're in America and you've got on those five, ten, fifteen, twenty million monthly listeners, you're clear. But now people are telling me, you, uh, the weekend had to sell a soul to get there. Doja had to sell a soul to get there. I'm like, damn, that's what it takes. So now I ask myself the same thing. I'm in the industry asking myself, why am I doing this? Why do I want to get there? Why do you? Because it's all I've known. And where did it come from? Like with the love for music? Because it's been the only part of life where I've always, always understood who Fortune Gabor is. Mm. I might not be able to tell you what he dresses like, how I speak, how I think, but all I can tell you is that he's a musician. And then you look at his discography, then, even in myself, I'm starting to learn more about myself. And I don't want to, I didn't know that you could, that I could have shouted you, man, being like, I got a project coming out, let me hop on. But, Carl, I got this EP coming out. Yeah, oh yeah, and plug it, October, um, 27th. October 27th. yeah. yeah. And then, um, it started off as a story about myself and the person I was seeing at the time. And then life done its thing, and I ended up being by myself. And it then became a... I love it. it's a life done its thing. <laughs> no, I won't even say... <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. I can't even... I hear you, bro. Don't go into it, man. It's I like because, the spin. It's I like because the spin. this person is looking at, down the camera going like... <laughs> at me right now. So, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how when you have to recalibrate yeah, your speech because yeah, yeah, you yeah. go off firm. Um, no, just the way you put it. I, um, life done its thing. <laughs> I started... I started... I didn't even realize the sound of my music was changing. Um, I started learning so much about myself as a person, as a brother, as a boyfriend, as a leader through my music. And the project that's coming out is a living, breathing example of going from being a memed nigga to being a, a sold out show nigga, two time sold out show nigga, headline button factory like Burner and them man did. Come on. The st- that EP is just soundtracking that. It's soundtracking the kid that was told no 10 times over to then doing this do you know and the music for me it's just always been a case of when nothing has made sense the music always has mm. even go back into the breakup I couldn't always articulate myself and how i was feeling nah just to end you end up making two or three tracks and not everything's off your dome why didn't you make her a song to make things work like, you, <laughs> bro, you think I didn't write yeah. tracks? Do you think I didn't write tracks, bro? Yo, no, I'll just what, say it again. I, I hear you talk. I hear you talk about like uh, what's called music has been the only thing that you've kind of made you understand yourself. Mm. What does being a musician mean to you? Um, in the current day, when however you however you take the question. Well, I'm gonna I'm on, I can't I'm not gonna speak about this in a general scheme because I can only say so much for like the grand scheme of being a musician. But myself in the industry now like i said i'm starting to realize the responsibility i have like for me to put on a show more for my enjoyment and my benefit than other people's only to an extent because like i said i i enjoy performing more than people like seeing me perform mm. so it's all, all off the dome gonna be a selfish thing mm-hmm. because i love it and i don't mind doing it if i get paid to do something i love of course i will but then when it goes from that to me sitting on my lunch break in a uniform like this and somebody comes up to me, they're like, Fortune, you're a rock star. I'm like, sorry? They're like, your show at the Sound House was the best night out I've had in Dublin. I'm like, I can do that? Mm. I can put on somebody's best night out in Dublin. Okay. Maybe I could do it again for them. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's more that we're able to do. 
And at the Unify event at Button Factory, I was speaking to the a journalist for Hot Press, and she was like, "That man, innit? No, because this thing I said in the grand scheme of things, I don't know who Hot Press are. I like in Ireland, it might be a big deal, but globally." I'm, but then I was Did like, Derrick Kennedy, Hosier, yeah, all of them have been part of Hot Press. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, but it was go, called. Yeah, go, yeah, go ahead, finish. <laughs> she looked at me and she was like, this rage thing. She's like, you can see you have it so small in your mind. She's like, where are you taking it? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, no. Look at the room that you filled in tonight. She's like, I've heard you name the people who have performed here before you 10 times over. Say it again. Loyal Kiner for one. Burner Boy for one. MF Doom, rest in peace for one. Pink Panthers for one. She's like, you filled up a room the same way they did. Mm. It's like, understand the powers that are within your music career now. You have bigger means to do bigger things now. So before, it was all just for the sake of myself. If Ma wouldn't let me go outside when I was seven years old, I'd write a song called I Hate You, Mum type shit. <laughs> I love my mom. She knows this. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Mumsy. <laughs> when, I was, when I was 13, 14, if I had a crush on the chicken, she didn't like me. There was a song. Those songs are still on Spotify to this day, fam. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Now it's a case where, okay, you're putting on shows, you're saying these things about the industry, recognize what you're doing. Things are starting to change. People are telling me I'm the future. I still don't know how. Mm. People are telling me I'm changing things. I still don't know how. I don't think you're ever going to feel like that, though. See what I'm saying? So now my thing is, hearing these things, accepting that people are saying these things, even though I don't understand it, being a musician to me now is doing what I can to make sure a kid like me either has a place to go to see that it's possible, has somebody to look at to know that it's possible, or just has a place to go to have a class time, man. Yeah. yeah. And I sh- like, uh, talking to him and talking to Manny, it's like very, y- guys that are young, but like focused and driven and into, it's rare to see. And he thought it was just like, obviously Manny thought it was normal. And you probably think like, I don't know how I'm doing this. I can see the r- how you guys relate in that way. So, but the way I'm listening to you and I listen to him, I'm like, it's not common that a 20-year-old would have so much drive and so much ambition, so much focus. I, I've said it to him as well as, as a 23-year-old, but I wanted to ask you a question ra- in regards to managers. And this is no shame. So glad you're asking me this <laughs> yeah. about managers at all, to be honest. <laughs> this is no shame because for me, I don't know what they do for in the, within the in- music industry. And conversation I've had is like some people just have titles, not just managers alone. Some people have given themselves titles as a way to be within the scene without really doing anything. They just plenty. This is just my title. Now yeah. I'm at an event, and you could you look at them and it's like, but what do you actually do? But you don't don't know. But for your manager or uh, managers in general, what are their roles within the music? In my opinion, I just ma- don't understand. In my opinion, your manager works for you. Like, um, <sighs> I don't care. I don't care. I had a manager this year that I had a, that I've been with for a long time, but I ended up falling very very upset because as a manager, you need to understand. In my mind, you are put there to do the things that the artist cannot do for themselves. I e you work for them. In a world where let's say you man were my managers. If you man put on that Soundhouse show, you get your 15%, you get your 10%, your 20%. You book the show, I sell out. We all did this together. Man, then we have peace, class. Now we recognize that I can do this. It's like, okay, if an artist comes to you and says, can we try go for this? Can we try go for this? Can we try go for this? Okay, why? Because this would be class for this release. This would be good for this. It would be good for this. Okay, if you don't already know, ask. If you do know, step to it. Because you're going to get peace from it in the other end as well. If you are working with somebody that you genuinely do believe them in, you're going to knock on the door and beg for every opportunity for them because you know if they get paid, I get paid. If I keep on pushing these men and I know that they'll rate this man, we're all going to meet, fam. It's it's pretty much like, it's like, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Eat what That's you kill. Simple, if I, it's if a simple if I kill a bigger meat, I get a bigger you piece see what of I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got, and I got to a stage where I was like doing so much by myself purely because I had a manager, but I felt like I didn't have one. Mm. Now it's an issue that I'm doing all of this by myself. I was like, you're not including me in anything. Like, I'm trying. I'm trying so hard. Do you think that I want to be emailing the bookers and the production team and these man? Bro, I'm supposed to rehearse, sell the tickets, show up, shell it, and piss off, bro. That's all an artist should do, fam. But now when you're in a world where independence is being pushed because managers shouldn't take money and labels shouldn't take money, you start to realize... I'm realizing how much an artist can do by themselves. Mm. Now I don't even really want to even go 
go into the world of bookers and managers and them because I realize if I can make this much money by myself, it'll, now it'll take me 20 years more than it'll take the man them with labels and with managers. But I can make all of my money back by myself, fam. Granted, it'll take 10 years over. But you look at a nigga like Brent Fayaz, who's independent. Might have a manager. I'm not sure how that works. But when you're independent and the labels and the managers aren't taking peas from the streams, from the tours, that's all your money. Yeah. Do you know? So, me, a manager, to put it simply, because I keep on dragging out the answer to your question. Talks, my apologies, podcast, bro. we're here to talk. Scratch my back, I scratch yours, fam. I'll be real. Because I could have done, people, people, oh, fam, people, one thing where I'm pissed off that I'm being left out, festivals fam okay ask me if i'm going to ep again fam oh yes ask me again bro shout out keston actually ep this weekend keston shows love all the time on the pod man proud of you congrats man Enjoy. real ones bro Enjoy to the Enjoy keston. my list for 2023 i'll even share this with you man i'll share a few I, I, I every time i step into your year i have a goals list so 2023 goals you man can see the first one was sell out the sound house on the music that one's ticked off Another when did you write the list? Say again? When did you write the list? End of 2022. Okay. Um, there's like, release my second EP, cool. Overall 10K streams, whatever, cool. Number one song, okay, whatever, cool. Summer Festival was one. I was like, I'm not leaving 2023 without this, fam. Niggas are telling me last year when I debuted my headline at the Grand Social, Fortune's going to be a longer two next year. Mm. Cash. So I'm like, okay, how do we do this, guys? They're like, usually if you can do another show, sell out, have a really big song, do decent enough. I'm like, okay, cool. Prayer did its thing. Class. We tried with the prayer. Amazing. Okay. We sold out two shows. Class. Can we send ourselves to the festivals now? Yeah, of course we can, my manager says. Did we hear back from them yet? No reply. Hey, can I talk to you about this thing? No reply. Any updates? No reply. I book another show by myself. You're not involving me in anything. Now it's a case of you're trying to do all of these things without me. Go under my nose. I have to leave. Bro. Bro, I, had, I only asked you for one thing, for mm. one thing. And one thing that I really, 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 really wanted to see myself do was do one festival, fam, a small one, bro. Just because, and it's the thing, when people tell you that you have to do something so much, you start to buy it. Yeah. You really yeah. start to believe it, bro. Mm -hmm. So then it just became a thing of, bro, all of my sense of directions were screwed, fam. Now I'm looking at this list and I'm like, bro, do I even want all of this shit, fam? Do I even need all of this shit? Yes. So with the, that... I get that because like, sometimes you believe it because it's like, Again, back to comics and uh, Andrew Schultz used to say, it's like, they, they used to believe you're, you're a stand-up and then you get a sitcom and then you're mm. on TV. Mm. And that was the pathway of every comic. Yeah, and then yeah, they yeah, re yeah. And he realized, like, wait, why is that the pathway? I can make so much money doing touring. To be fair to them, also podcasts change the game for a lot of for a lot, like, mm -hmm. a lot of people. So there's, there is new avenues that create themselves that you can make a list and like, you feel like, why do I feel like I have to do this when I, when I could, there's other avenues to do, but you're, you're, it's embedded within your brain, you know that conditioned. Yeah. I feel like, that's what you do I, as a musician. Taking all of that in led me to get wrongfully upset with my year as a whole. Yeah. Because now it becomes a thing. People are start, people start calling me the sellout king. They're like, you sell out shows like it's easy. Back to back. Now I feel like I have to sell out the show. Mm. I really wanted to sell out Unify Fam, the Button Factory show. We weren't far at all. I know why we didn't. Two separate reasons. One was because I felt like all of my priorities got shaken. I was only saying that I have to sell out was because I didn't want there to come a show where... He sold out three, but he didn't do the fourth. He sold out two, but he didn't do the third. On one of the tracks on the EP, you'll hear my boy Danzi say, you hear me say at the start, see, he did it twice, but now he's going for a three-peat. And mm. then my boy said three-peat from, niggas are saying hat-trick with songs, bro. Mm. So I'm like, okay, I have to live up to this. Because the oh, people, yeah. I, I'd be like, I'd love to hear people come back to me and be like, bro, you did it three you times. You did a hat-trick, three-peat. Yeah, Michael Jordan tickets. Yep. So now I feel like, I feel like my relationship, exactly, Michael Jordan fam, I was rinsing the last <laughs> dance during this prep fam. Rinsing it. <laughs> Bro, you even look at my lock screen. I'm like, guys, we have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this. We don't do it. How many were we off? Less than 100. Fuck, oh, fam. We were so close. I, 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 bro, I've rounded up, bro. I'm I taking that, man. I'm taking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, that, you know what? It's, and, um, it's a pride thing. You know that. Yeah, cash. Yeah. And I'm like, I feel like, I feel like, especially because of my boys, Olisa and Daniels, my relationship with God has gotten so much closer. Amen to that. So now I feel like, bro, times 10. So now I'm looking at everything. I'm like, bro, this is all written for me. I am not put here in Dublin to be the boy that sells out every single show. Mm. There's way more to me than that. And... You can kind of see that that's where my worth comes from here is because I sold out twice. I don't mind. I'm thankful that I have that on me. But 
it then became a thing of, okay, God didn't give me that opportunity because he said, fam, this cannot be the start and the end of your story. You need to find another way to give these people a reason to respect you. Yeah. In came the podcast where I was able to say the things that were on my mind and people started looking at me outside of music. Bro, I can't lie. If you know you need a manager or you're looking for one, make sure it's somebody that has the same priorities as you. Because that is what I feel, the second reason we didn't sell out Button Factory. Because my people, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, Family Ties, it's a big group of people, we're lovely. It consists of four artists between myself, Kid Kuba, Aluna, and Danzi. You have Olisa, five, who directs, shoots, he produces, he script writes. You have Baby Girl Films, and Tade on video and camera. You have Quangs and myself on production, Olisa as well. Everybody was working around the clock. We were shooting skits back to back, selling tickets every day, doing mad crazy promo. And I'm a firm believer of if you want something to happen, everybody on the ship needs to want it to happen as well. Everybody needs to understand the assignment from point A to B to Z. And because that was the first show where Fortune was headlining, but I wasn't booking, I only had so much say-so with who performed. I was like, okay, these men don't have the same priority as us. It's just an opportunity for them. So we cannot make it a case where we are carrying someone else's load trying to make something happen for yourself. If you have a manager on your team, you can't do managerial things as the artist if somebody's already sitting in that seat, fam. In the case of understand who you're taking onto your team, understand who you're asking to manage you, put all of your dreams and aspirations on the line and say, look, bro, this is my life. This is everything I live and breathe. If you fuck it up, you are fucking me up, fam. Mm. On a real level. Make that known, and I feel like everything will be cool after that. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's go real, qu- real quick, because there's two things you said that interest me, right? Mm. You said that your life as a movie has been written for you. You just have to go out and live the scenes. And then obviously later on, you said that your relationship with God has been, has been a lot closer recently. Do you mind believe in fate like that? Everything is written. You don't really have a choice like that. You feel like you have a choice, but to it's kind of written to an extent. To an extent. Yeah, yeah. I've, 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 I've asked this, this, I've got asked this question so many times. I think there is things that I like. Certain things that if they're for you, and I think Orlet says it on the episode with Dongo, and she's like, we're not here to beg what what's is for us is for us. So we're not going to beg for it. Like, it's written for us. So mm-hmm. I do understand that. I do understand that, like, yeah, do you know what? If I do the right things the right way, whatever's for me, I will get to it. But do I feel like, I have no decision in something. Yeah, you do. Because like, if I do want to get my defined six-pack... You're not getting that six-pack. Oh, probably not. <laughs> 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 Sorry, right. I have to make the decision to go to the gym. So I don't think that's like it's predetermined that I will get to have a defined six-pack. Mm-hmm. So I, to an extent, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, yes. But everyday decisions, I still think you have to make. I don't know if that I feel like sense. I feel like an action has a reaction. Yeah. Do you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like I could go out here... I could walk out into the world and be like, look, anything can happen today. The way I see it, life will throw something at me and be like, something has happened. React the way you see fit. Mm. And then everything after that shifts to a specific yeah. extent. But I feel like we only have so much control over ourselves and people don't want to come to terms with how little control they have in the world. Mm. And I feel like that's now I'm getting into techie waters, but and I'm, I feel like that's where a small percentage of people who don't believe in God find a reason not to believe in God because they don't want to accept the fact that everything that's operating is way above us. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I feel like everything happens on my say so, on my clock. Yeah. I'm like, it does, but only to a specific extent. This world was put here way before us, fam. Houses were built here way before us, fam. How do you think everything operates? Do you know? I feel like it's harder to believe in that, to, be, to believe that you're in control of absolutely everything. Go on. Because when, what's a, when a tragedy happens or someone passes away, what's the first thing they said? Oh, it's part of God's plan. They're in a better place, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have, like, I genuinely feel like if religion was removed away from a lot of people, a lot of people would kill themselves. Oh, absolutely. Because, yeah. I'll stand corrected on that. Because, because, especially, because, especially in third world oh, countries where absolutely. you have nothing to hold on to. God is the only thing you have. Do you get what I'm saying? Why, what stopped me from re- killing the rich man and stealing his riches? For some people, it's really his religion. That's mm-hmm. Their morality is based on, like, I can't do this because I will go to hell or I believe in God, yeah. I'm a good person. Mm-hmm. Remove that, anarchy. Fair. 
anarchy. I, I, I didn't even see it like that. It's mild. Now that you it's say mild. that, it's no, crazy. It's, it's, you just think of the, the wealth experiences like in Africa. And oh, yeah, yeah. Some people, that's what they do on Sunday. They go to church to get that hope. They'll give their tithe. They're rich men. Now you tell, you're you telling those people that go to church every Sunday, oh, oh yeah, all this is for yeah, No, yeah. I, I was I was. What's going to stop me, man? I wasn't yeah. even saying it because of that. I was yeah. saying it for people that when bad things happen, the only yeah, thing yeah. that gets them through is, yo, God has a plan. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a TikTok recently. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I saw a TikTok recently. And the, uh, a guy said they lost. It, it was the guy doing the TikTok because one of those Reddit TikTok says that his little brother died, and his parents didn't have a religion to hold them together, so he had to be the therapist. Whereas if he had something like religion to be like, it's God's plan. God wanted to do this. God took him away from us. It's a coping mechanism. Like sometimes fucked up things happen, and some people need to be like, this was God's plan just to yeah. cope, you just to, to be blame. able to exist in in that moment. So can I ask you, man, a question? What do you say to the person? So let's say. Let's say I was somebody who didn't believe in God and somebody in my life had passed away. And then you come to me and you say it's God's plan. And I look you in the eyes. I'm like, how are you going to tell me that somebody passing away in my life is somebody's plan? Mm -hmm. And even let's put this into, because I don't know if you man would have seen uh, the show Euphoria. Yep, but there's Zendaya's character, Rue. Her father passed away in the show. uh, Rue's father passed away in the show. And her whole thing was, my dad was here looking after me and my little sister, Mm -hmm. and we have no type of control over our lives Mm -hmm. without him. So for you to look me in my eyes and say that him dying, leaving me and my sister by ourselves is God's plan, is kind of fucked up, to be honest. What do you say to somebody like that? You say that... Charge. (laughs) 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 Jordan, that might be the funniest thing you said on the podcast. (laughs) Um, um, I I, I tell them, I, I say that... Life is about balance. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's a lyric. So I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, fam, I'm not gonna lie. Fuck. If, I, if, I, if I lost, if I lost one of my parents, or someone said, "Charge it." <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear that. I'm flipping. <laughs> I'm flipping. <laughs> Bro, I'm pile driving you into the floor. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, but um, all jokes aside, though, I told them life is about balance. Like, there's no good without bad. There's no bad without good. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And as much as it is, as it is God's plan, like as horrible as it sounds, shit happens. Yeah, like it yeah. really just is that. Like you can't. Like as parents, you want to. As parents, you want to protect your child from everything bad, and you don't want them to go through any hardships. But that's not life. Life doesn't work like that. You can't experience good without bad. You can't experience bad without good. You get what I'm saying? Like you have to have that moment being in your room, being like, "Oh my God, I hate life. I will get me out of here." To then when you're on stage and it's like your crowd surfing, it's like fuck this is fucking amazing yeah. if you didn't have the other you wouldn't appreciate the yeah. other properly so i think that's that's literally what it's about like it's unfortunate but also it might be god's plan because the pain that you experienced might be the thing that might be the thing that what's propels called you. propels you yeah. to go do the next thing yeah. like for me it's weird like my parents getting divorced is probably one of the best things that happened to me personally okay, cool. just yeah. because my mom, my mom was so in love with my dad, and like they were so busy, and like it was almost like it was him first, then us. Wow. So the thing is, in those times, if you had let me go wow. outside and be, be on recklessness and be on crud, I, Lord knows what would have happened to me. Do you get what I'm saying? But then, obviously, they divorced. Whatever, we moved to a, to Ireland. Ireland's not as it's not as gang heavy. It's not as this because we're in South London. Ireland's not as gang heavy. It's not as this. And when she when he was caught out. We then became the main focus. So now, I couldn't be outside at nine o'clock without you calling me. Do you get what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's kind of like it's a shitty thing that happened for her. It's probably like, "Rah, marriage is marriage done." But for me, it's like I get a bit more attention now, and now I can flourish a bit more. I don't have. Do you get what I'm saying? So it really just is like that. that Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to that point, I saw a TikTok recently. This is the first ten years, like of your kid's life, is when you're molding them. Give they need attention. They need assurance. They need constantly to for you to be present if, and that will mold them that will shape them so i do understand where it comes from yeah. in that did you instance. man have were you man always on the route of like doing something on the lines of this or was it a college no. route or something other like I, I i did science in college okay. i work at pharmaceuticals now no, okay, i just stumbled okay. across uh, upon this because someone was trying to start a podcast network right. and i have a football account on twitter and he put me with his friend to do a football podcast at right. the time and then turned into this and it's fun I, I like i enjoy talking to artists i enjoy talking to 
creatives. I enjoy talking to podcasters. I just love, I just love having fun conversations. I've tried not saying this this whole episode. I know you've heard the storms. Oh, the every, every before, every. but it's so scary. Yeah, yeah. look, I get, I get, I'm used to it. Like, I really, I'm just <laughs> used to it. But did you um, have any dilemmas before we wrap up? Uh, nah, I ain't got but shit also, to did you, f- did you want to do something this route? To um, no. To be honest, like, I'm not gonna lie to you. I envy people like you that it's like. Your whole being is created for music and this and that. Bro, I have no fucking idea what I want to do. Like I'm it. literally, I'm just, someone says, try this. Yeah, fuck it, why not? Like, how I found podcasting was one day I randomly found one American, like, bro, some random American podcast on on SoundCloud. I listened, found him on, found one of the people on that podcast. He went to another podcast and it just kept going like that. Found a bunch of podcasts and was like, you know, this is cool. Like, I do, I want to do this shit. And then I was like, I have no friends to do with. Two years later, a year later, I started a podcast, started second one, third one. Now we're here. And yeah, it just kind of is. And I'm not going to lie to you. It's more, funnily enough, the podcast and all of this shit is actually more against who I naturally am than anything wow. else. I Like, Jordan knows, I w- I'm quick to disappear. If I'm not in the mood to be anywhere, you guys don't hear from me. You can't text me. You can't call me. Um, I don't really like doing the socials. That's why Jordan does all the socials. On my personal so Instagram, like, even I got, I was chatting to, I was chatting to Nessa. She was like, if sometimes it feels like you only come on your Instagram to promo. So it's like, I'm selling tickets. New TV, new episode out. Yo, buy tickets. Oh, I'm hosting here. I'm hosting here. But like, me That's personally, just me like personally, just trying to sell us something. yeah, do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> and it comes across a bit. Mm. So me personally, I don't even like, I don't have the natural instinct to like, oh shit, I'm here. Let me take out. A p- t- like it's something that people have to tell me to do or be like, yo, do this, do this. So do it's you, weird. Do you, do you feel like, do you feel like you're somebody that can kind of, I won't even say pick up things easy, but like, are you willing to like, if there was something that you genuinely loved and you were like, I fuck with this, even if it's periodical, do you feel like it's somebody you're like, if I want to do this, I'll pick it up and get it done? Um, <coughs> Kind of. Like, I feel like I have a weird arrogance okay, in terms on. of like, sometimes I don't rate a lot of things that I've done okay. just because it didn't feel hard to me. Okay. Like, it's kind of like, no, fair, fair, it kind of just like, yeah. the podcast low-key kind of just fell into my lap. Mm-hmm. Like, what's called, my friend said, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. And then off of that, um, Dio and Joe texted me and he was like yo we got three at the back we want you to join and say yeah fuck it that's how I ended up here like all of these things just kind of fell into my lap and I felt like I do pick up things quicker, quick enough and also because I'm a procrastinator I've kind of become used to just doing things last minute that it just is what it is so I guess yeah things do come pretty easy enough I feel like <clears throat> and I say I say this to a very good friend of mine who um, she's somebody who ha- the best of life usually comes her way and there was a period of time where people started giving her shit for it. Like, everything just falls in her lap. And I never like to see it as falling in the lap. Because like I said, if I'm looking at a world where the story's written and everything is operating for me, around me, bro. Like, you could say that you have no reason to sit here and you didn't work for it or anything of the sorts. But there is very much a reason why you're here. Even if it's as simple as just to have a nigga with a deep-ass voice on a mic. Gas it could me. be as simple as that. Gas me. My thing <laughs> is, it's true. We needed somebody a bearded nigga with a deep voice. Like, so I'm here, saying, here. <laughs> anybody, anybody in, in my life, the way I see it, anybody who does not know what they want to do is in such a cool position in life. And I'm speaking with a level of ignorance and lack of knowledge because, like I said, I know what it's like, or I, I could imagine a world where you're a grown man and you don't know 100% what you want to do. Like, the pressure's on every time you wake up. But my thing is, fam, you walk out into the world and everything is there at your exposal fam like everything is purely there for you fam yeah you know what i'm saying and it's a case where if you i think i see it as if you can treat the world like that there isn't anything that you yourself can't do because you're like bro i'm not tied down to one thing mm. yeah i could do anything today do you know what i'm saying yeah you to be honest a new thing today i, I feel like I see, I see both ends of the spectrum like mm. on, on one end like the reason why i say i wish i had something that was just like my being was all for is because the level of drive that you have when it's that laser focus is like, this yeah. is what I'm meant, meant to do. That level of drive, it's so much better because when you don't know what you're doing, it's kind of like, There's sometimes, no towards anything. do you get what I'm saying? You yeah, start yeah, one yeah, thing yeah. and then like, it's halfway like, mm, through, I don't want to do this. Mm. Or you know, I want, the like, same with Manny. Manny is like, I'm going to open this shop, second shop, third shop. That's why his what drive is towards. But it, when you're, when your attention is so scattered, sometimes you might feel like, 
Like, there's times on podcasts, like, why the fuck am I doing this? Is there actually a point in doing this? Mm-hmm. Is this what I'm meant to do? Should I fuck it and try something else? Mm-hmm. Then I've tried radio. Should I fuck it and try to do it? Oh, then I've tried this. Fuck Post it, try that. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, you just keep trying. Yes, on a part is fun, but then, bro, mm. you know, 30s, 30s chasing you around the yeah. corner. You're feeling like, I don't really like my nine to five. Am I going to do this forever? Do I really want to do this? You know, am I wasting my time? Should I just focus on this? But when, like, when the way you speak about being a musician, it's like there is not a single doubt in your mind of this is what I need to do. Yeah, that yeah, is. Like, I'm put on this earth to do. This. Yeah, do you get what I'm saying? It's almost like, like I, I need to do this. I know where the finish line is. I just need to chase it. Yeah. For me, I don't know where the finish. You just dropped me in the map and you said, "Figure it out." So. And I feel like I'm putting you in a bit of a weird position asking you to give advice on this. But like I said, I look at you and like I have off, like the first time me and you were actually sitting down and have a mm-hmm. conversation. I am so eager to learn how you hold yourself so composed and so calm in a situation like that. Because, bro, let's be He's real. screaming inside <clears throat> right now. In a world where... In a world where when a grown man's 30s are creeping up on him and he still don't know, this is my mission. Like, this is what I'm here for. How do you specifically find peace in that? Because I yeah. feel like I know a lot of the pressure I come from, or the, 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 the drive I have comes from the pressure of just saying that it's done and that it's been achieved and that I have a career in this. So how do you, because yeah, like, I feel like that's my boys will watch this and take a piece from your composure and how you carry yourself. Like, how do you go about holding yourself in a world where you don't know what you're doing? You get into the age where people are telling you you should know what you do, but you don't. How do you hold this piece? Um, to be honest, as long as I'm not a bum, I'm gone. I'm cool. Like, that's, I think that was good for me because I'm, I'm in the same boat. I'm in a situation like, yeah, as long as I'm not a bum, I can provide for yeah. myself. And like, what's called like, is, you good. got a job, you got a car, you got a family, you got a house. Yeah. What else do you need? Do you get what I'm saying? I'm happy. Like, you can figure everything else out. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not above working a job that I don't want to work. And I know you might have wanted to cut the episode off, but sorry, you no, just no, got no. into bo- Cause, yeah, because the camera died. You know, yeah, no, I'm switching um, that camera. You don't yeah, need to yeah, yeah, We're here. No, just, yeah. Um, <laughs> I got to I got to a stage this year where I had kind of started having everything that I wanted to get done done, and then I was looking around, and I remember it was the unified night, man. Now like, <sighs> there was a world where there was always one, there was always one person I was gonna celebrate all of these wins with, mm. one very very special person to me. That person had come and gone. That's fine. I have my niggas to celebrate with, and then it became the thing of. A single fortune is the best fortune as a musician because he dedicates all his time, energy, anger, whatever the case may be, he channels it all into the music. And that's where we eat. But then I was looking around, I'm like, bro, I've done all of this, but like, I've been seeing my mom way less through the year and seeing my sister way less through the year. Now I don't have my girlfriend either. But greatness requires such a level of sacrifice sacrifice, that people aren't willing to do. And I I looked around and I was like, I have my people, but there's so much that I've lost. Mm. I got there and I was like, oh, even if I make it, like, what is the word for me? Because now I look at you and you're like, bro, if I have my friends, if I have my family, if I have my car, if I have my life, it's all okay. It's all well. I looked around and I didn't have as much as I had. And then I kind of came, started to reckon, I'm like, okay. Sacrifice, like it's really like this. No, yeah, but what's called once, once, once you become comfortable with letting things go, because the thing is, as much as it's like because you've gone through the route of you've done this, so you feel like because you've done this, you lost those. But the thing is, if you went the other way, you could have lost those things anyways. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's kind of like just kind of being comfortable in the fact of like you're not sacrificing for no reason. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, like, every every good thing has a dark side. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I saw, did you see that thing of Charlemagne put up? It's like, Beyonce can't go out to, like, regular fake. restaurant. It, it wouldn't surprise me if it was <laughs> no, real. Yeah, it was but, the Michael but, Jackson lot. But, 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 the, yeah. but, but I say, I, 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 I say that Taylor too. Taylor Swift went for dinner in the New Jersey mm-hmm. and it was packed. Yeah. So that means you can't go to dinner. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, you look at someone like Drake and be like, I wish. But then, do you really wish? Because, that nigga rolls around with a convoy every day. <laughs> like he, c- he can't be by himself. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you can't just you can't just have a bad day and just say fuck it. I I don't want to chat to anybody today because there's millions of people that want that just want to sniff you, let alone take a picture or anything. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's kind of like you gotta you gotta sacrifice. This, there's always gonna be a sacrifice, and it just always comes down to risk and reward. It's kind of like those things that you feel like oh I don't have anymore. Would you rather have that than the thi- than those experiences of being on stage and selling out those That's shows? Thing, bro. Now I genuinely don't know. I genuinely don't know. Yeah. 
Like, <clears throat> and you watched the last dance. You saw that Michael Jordan, when he had a moment to himself, just smoking a cigar, how he valued <coughs> that. But would he give that up? Would he take that instead of being Michael Jordan? Probably not. Probably. But not, he yeah. loved it that yeah, he was just yeah, there yeah, with his yeah, back yeah. to having a cigar. Yeah, so sure. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and to be honest, you know what it is. I th- I feel like just because. Just because the way I've grown up, I've always recognized that sacrifice is a thing. And I feel like, for me, for the longest time, sacrifice was tied to love. So it's just something that I've just always been comfortable with. If I mm-hmm. if I understand, if thank God I haven't lost anybody close to me. If, but if I understand, if I lose somebody, or if I lose something, or I lose a friend, or whatever, I'm not really dying inside. Like, even if I miss you, it's like, eh, yeah. it is what it is. Do you get That's what I'm saying? One thing that I was like, I realized, I was like, oh, okay, niggas can live through this type shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro, yeah, bro. That 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 was cracking my head, and I had to ask Carl. Yeah, not like, here. Yeah. No, it it makes sense. It like, makes sense, yeah. and like, so if look, you're so driven towards one thing, you're probably envious of the other side thing. Like, imagine just waking up and wanting to do different things, where you have the not the curse, I would say, of like, I have to do this. This is my. Job. Especially and if it's not working. Yeah. Because if it's not yeah. working, then you're like, I actually wish I didn't give a fuck about this. Yeah. Thing. Like, yeah. You, you you don't you don't understand how many times I've sat there. And I, it's like, I actually wish that I was content with a nine to five, 20 holiday days. Oh, absolutely. Like, cause absolutely, it's, yeah. your life looks so calm. Uh, you go to work, after you finish work, you come home, you have dinner and you watch TV. And then you do the same thing for the next 40 calm, years. Bro, do you get what I'm down, saying? Bro, like, yeah. like your life is so calm, it's so easy. Do you know how much it, how annoying it is to have to stress, yo, Texas ain't moving like they need to be moving. Yeah, yo, yeah, yeah. I've got, I wake up from a nap and what's the first thing I'm thinking? i got somewhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the thing of waking up and having something to do every day, fam. Do you yeah, get what I'm saying? And then yeah. feeling like shit for not, like, you know that day that you're just not as productive is like, I know I should have done this today, but I didn't do it. Oh, fuck, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's just, it's, look, sacrifice just is what yeah. it is at sacrifice the end of the day. Sacrifice is what it is. But well, fortune, we say this, any uh, anytime you have anything you want to promote, you can always... DM me as you come on yeah. anytime. Even if you just said you said you don't want to fuck the scene, I want to talk about this. Oh yeah, yeah. bro. This this this, yeah, this, yeah, this, this needs a part two. Yeah, you're welcome, <laughs> you're welcome to come on anytime. Just we're just a t- like you said earlier, we're a message away. If you, you got like any, wait, wait, wait. you got if you got any questions, feel free to hit us up anytime. Whatever. Also, charge your merch. We got we got hoodies. We got tote bags. We got t shirts. The t shirts oh. are fantastic. Mm, mm, chef's kiss quality. The hoodie. I'm even looking at it now. Bro, bro, it what's called <laughs> hoodie t shirts? Twenty five euro hoodies. 40, 40 euros tote bags 10 euros or you oh, can do a bundle nice. deal all yeah. three 70 euros you know it's beautiful guys make sure you like you make sure you share you make sure you subscribe because apparently we don't be saying that <laughs> <laughs> like uh what's called john you plug your socials uh, oh that's fortune on ig fortune nigga born everything else uh yeah just do you know and yeah. yeah, if you didn't like anything we said on this podcast today, you can charge it. Charge yeah. it. Thank <laughs> you for listening. <laughs>